this week on At the Movies with Ebert and Roper, Rain Wilson is the rocker. Find the renegades that hold Jabba's son. Your mission will be Skywalker. Is the Force still with us? We'll review Star Wars The Clone Wars. Some of us might not make it back. What do you mean? Like, not on the same flight? Plus, Ben Stiller, Jack Black, and Robert Downey Jr. accidentally go to war in Tropic Thunder. Yes! We are playing the Tiger Room in Fort Wayne, Indiana, Saturday night. Oh, are... Indiana. Oh. My mom's not going to let me go to Indiana. No. You don't ask your parents for permission to rock. Rain Wilson provides the backbeat for his nephew's garage band. I'm Michael Phillips of the Chicago Tribune. And I'm Richard Roper. Step Brothers meets the 40-year-old virgin meets School of Rock in The Rocker. And it's one of the funnier movies I've seen this year. It opens next week. And this is, yes, an early review. This is yet another entry in the arrested development genre. And isn't it telling that we hardly ever see movies about 40-ish women who can't grow up? Rain Wilson from The Office plays Robert Fish Fishman. He's a hapless but likable mope and would-be drummer who was dumped by the band Vesuvius just before they hit it big. 20 years later, Vesuvius is huge. Fish is living in his sister's attic. I was actually just wondering if you'd play with us at our prom gig. Oh. What did you just say? That's Josh Gad as Fish's nephew. Now, when Fish becomes a YouTube sensation by accident, the garage band suddenly has a chance to go huge, to go national. That, my friends, is what happens when you're a rock star. Night, guys. Night, baby. Oh, crap. Mom? I trust you. Ow. I vouch for you and for the Ow. safety of these kids. This is how you pay me back, by being a drunken, irresponsible, drunken... You already said drunken. That's Christina Applegate. She plays the obligatory, conveniently hot, grown-up woman who finds something charming and refreshing about the Peter Pan guy. Will Arnett is hilarious as the leader of Vesuvius. You have a band that was supposed to launch. Why do you guys have British accents? Look, it's fish. Who? Oh, trash, trash is fish! Fishy! Fish and chips. Oh, oh no, no, I love no, fish. fish. I'm having a laugh. Like Will Ferrell and Jack Black, Rain Wilson has the ability to strike just the right note between pathetic schlub and someone you really want to root for. It's the same thing Bill Murray pulled off a generation ago. I also like the performances from the kids, most notably the relationship between Josh Gad and Emma Stone, who was also very good in Superbad. The Rocker isn't as funny as Forgetting Sarah Marshall. It's not as fresh as School of Rock, but it's a goofy and amusing late summer film with more than enough laughs to recommend it. I'm saying see it. Me too. I say see it too. I think this this comparison to School of Rock is on the money because that's kind of, you know, the, it's it's a gentler comedy than, than so many of the others we've seen lately, and yet it doesn't feel like it's just pablum, you know what I mean? I think the kid relationships actually do feel like verifiable high school relationships. Right. And this idea, this familiar idea of kind of the 40-year-old the non-virgin, but sort of like hanging out with these guys. It and finally gets to meet a woman and have yeah, some decent yeah. relationships and Familiar grow up a stuff, bit. but Rain Wilson it does, have, does have this completely off-center charm. He's not really a physical comedian of note yet, you know, and well, I think in I, a way, you know, he's, he's you're gonna get there yet, but um, I like I think he just looks funny, so he's, in a way he's a physical comedian. <laughs> I think he does have some, some physical... Some, uh, yeah. Yeah, talent yeah, there, yeah. Michael, to be, to be funny just with little moves. And yeah, it's, it's a tricky thing because when you've got a 40-year-old guy hanging around with teenagers, you have to stay out of the creep zone and they manage to do that here. It's very charming. Yeah. Everybody's very likable and some just flat-out funny stuff very going funny, on here. Yeah, very funny, but real too. And the same director did The Full Monty and, mm -hmm. you know, if you like any of the kind of, you know, it, it, that film worked as broad comedy but not caricature. And yeah. I think that's the key to this film's success too. So, okay, yeah, I like enough. it. Yeah, funny movie. Okay, next movie. Luke Wilson plays a religious skeptic diagnosed with a terminal disease in the film Henry Poole is Here. And while that premise sounds like it's going to go for the throat, emotionally speaking, the results are Hi. unbelievably Hi. low key. Henry decides to spend Nick what time he has Nick left Nick hiding out in a house yeah, on the block he grew party? up on, hiding and Sorry. drinking. That'll be 155.82. I thought maybe you might be throwing some parties. No parties. Well, that doesn't look like a very healthy diet. Just kind of a phase. That's Rachel Seaforth as the cashier, one of the bright spots of this picture, which I said is unbelievably low-key. One day, Henry's neighbor, played by Adriana Barraza, sees the face of Jesus on the side of Henry's house. Henry thinks it's just a lousy stucco job, but pretty soon the neighborhood's treating the face as a shrine. So, what would George Lopez, for example, say about this situation? Well, I can see how it could be interpreted as a face. Oh, my God. 
is quite clear. But the face of Christ, I'm not so sure that we can make that leap. Thank you. Thanks. The film is directed by Mark Pellington, who did Arlington Road and the Mothman Prophecies. It's a sincere exploration of faith and belief and the power of miracles. It is not, however, much into the power of cinematic storytelling. Henry's more of a discussion point than a fully fleshed character. And his romance with the single mother next door, played by Rada Mitchell, and Henry's friendship with her troubled daughter, played by Morgan Lilly, it all feels very easy. So Henry Poole is here, but just barely, even with some solid performances. Richard, I have to say, skip it. You know, Michael, I have to say, see it. This film really and truly moved me, I have to tell you. And you know, I have a book out right now in which I get into the whole, you know, Virgin Mary and the grilled cheese kind of phenomenon where people see, think they see things. But what I was careful to do in the book and what I think this film does a very good job of is it doesn't make fun of the faith of these people who want to believe in something that might just be a stucco stain and it might not really be anything. And I think it really treats that. I think it has, a, it takes a lot of courage to put out a movie that really embraces faith. Well, and, it is and, the most, yes, and, it is faith And, I, don't, based, and I, yeah. I get what you're saying about low key because I think that, you know, it's, it's obviously a small film. Most of the action takes place literally on that one block. But I think the emotions are, are huge and, and sincere. And Luke Wilson, I think, is very good here. We don't know much about Henry Poole until we pick up, you know, his story right. where he's, you know, in his last days. And I, I think it's, it's amazing the, w the way the story goes. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it, is, it is absolutely without any guile or calculation, yeah. I think, in terms of how are we going to sell this, uh, this really kind of religious theme yeah. To, yeah. Uh, to a mass audience. Uh, to me, it just felt... A little inert on the story level, I guess, despite well, the acting. So it's, yeah, it's know. very convenient. There's, there's you know this gorgeous woman right next door with her daughter who has a problem. But I, you know, if she I'm, had been I'm one block you, over, one block I'm, over, I'm I would have bought it. Michael, I just, I, you know, I just embraced this film, and I, I hope people check it out. Richard, we have to agree to disagree on this one. All right, fair enough. Later in the show, Robert Downey oh, Jr., like you've never seen him before, he stars with Ben Stiller and Jack Black in Tropic Thunder. And next, how energy efficient are those lightsabers? Anyway, it's Star Wars. Clone Wars. Want to see what life is like on the A-list? At the Movies and Hotels.com are giving away two tickets to a movie premiere and a four-star stay in Hollywood. Visit AtTheMoviesTV.com to enter. Brought to you by Hotels.com. Hotel reviews from people like you. Richard, I've seen Lego reenactments of Return of the Jedi on YouTube with more going for them than our next film, Star Wars The Clone Wars. What uh, we have here, besides a failure to communicate any of the Star Wars magic to audiences, is a knockoff and a tie-in to the Clone Wars TV series debuting this month. So, who's in it? For starters, young Obi-Wan and young Anakin Skywalker. Yoda, still talking in that nutty, bass-ackward way of his, assigns Anakin a Padawan named Asuka, to learn the Jedi tricks of the trade. Where the fun begins. Race you to the top. I'll give you a head start. Your mistake. Attack the cables. I'm right behind you, Master. That's one of the tricks. How to slaughter enemies while scaling the climbing wall at REI. Clone Wars pits the forces of the Galactic Republic against the Confederacy. The plot has to do with Jabba's son, Rada the Hutt, getting kidnapped and he's sick and he needs help, but the movie doesn't care. It's more interested in weaponry than child care issues. <laughs> Shall we continue? My pleasure. The animation here, which looks like woodcuts that <laughs> fail to get animated, is alarmingly mediocre. And yes, for the record, the quality of animation <laughs> does matter in an animated feature. George Lucas himself executive produced this picture, which takes place chronologically between Attack of the Clones and Revenge of the Sith for you wonks. But while the Star Wars brand is gold, Clone Wars feels like the clone of a clone of the son of a clone, and as Yoda would say, skip this thing you should. Or even sucks this movie does. Uh, you know, the cartoon thing, I was I, at least hoping one of them at one point would say, hey, has anybody noticed that we're all animated here? We used to be live action. Uh, the animation is, -union, you is know. mediocre. You know, you have the mouths moving and it's not really matched to the dialogue. And really, what's the point other than to set up the TV show here? Yeah, we no, have I've... no investment in the new characters, no. and, and the familiar characters have never seen 
so two-dimensional, so uninteresting. It's not, and it's not one fair. battle after another. Oh, it's, you know? ugh, one, it's like one big, dull battle. And, and you know, if you, if you actually did the test of, okay, going cold, you don't know anything about the Star Wars picture, this would be the biggest write-off of the year, as is, no matter how much or how little you know about the Star Wars mythology, yeah. no I, good. Other than the infamous uh, musical special that ran, I think, once in the 70s, this is one of the more <laughs> mediocre entries in the entire Star Wars catalog. I think so. All right, later in the show, I'll give you my picks for the best movies in theaters right now in my three to see. And coming up next, Ben Stiller, Robert Downey Jr., and Jack Black try to go all apocalypse now on you in Tropic Thunder. Into the water, ladies. No, 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 man. Let me take a look at that map right quick. Why is everybody all obsessed with the map? Because we're tired of being your trail donkeys, acting like you some one-man GPS. Damn it. We lost. We super lost, man. Tell them, McCluskey. Tell them what time it is. I don't believe you people. What do you mean, you people? Our next movie, Tropic Thunder, has two or three of the biggest laughs of the year. So you figure three, three fifty a laugh in this economy, not bad. Ben Stiller <laughs> directed, co-wrote and co-stars as action star Tug Speedman, who's making a Vietnam War movie in Vietnam that's going to out platoon platoon and make Apocalypse Now look like Apocalypse Yesterday. Here, he tackles a dramatic scene with Robert Downey Jr., who plays an Australian Oscar winner, think Russell Crowe. Now, this actor has changed the color of his skin to play an African-American platoon sergeant. <laughs> Sorry, can we cut? No, no! We're still rolling! What's going on for real? My butt is hurting! You know what it is? Damien, I think it's the line. So That's now we're in rewrites, place. right? Where are you going? Let's rewrite it. Action Jackson oh, can't sorry. cry. That's okay. what's going down. I'll do you this. know what, Kirk? I'm ready to do the scene. Now it's time to flip the script. Kirk, you no. mean until Chinese New Year away from my man to cry. Downey Jr. is pretty amazing in this spoof of total Jackson. immersion lunatics that is, in fact, now. An act of total immersion itself. When the director's <laughs> accidentally blown up on the set, the coolest cast of the war movie thinks it's just another special effect. Meantime, actual guerrilla fighters engage these guys in actual warfare. Here, Jack Black, as a jumpy heroin addict, huddles with Brandon T. Jackson, who plays a hip hop star turned actor, best known for an energy drink called Booty Sweat. Mm. We're trying to find a way to get out of this mess. I did a low budget comedy for Skinamax. Remember it? Anyway, me. And the campers from the uncool camp had to break into the rich girl camp. So what we did, we built a catapult out of logs and underwear, and they shot us over the wall, and we parachuted down. Tropic Thunder actually has more of action than comedy, which is too bad, and you get the feeling that Stiller, preoccupied with all the pyrotechnics, let the scale get a little out of whack. But here's the test. Look at the poster for Tropic Thunder. Check out the perfectly judged crazy look in the Iron Man star's eyes, Robert Downey Jr. It took a whole lot of time just to get up that hill. Now we up in the big leagues. Kid not turn to bed. Long as it lives, it's you and me, baby. <laughs> That's the theme song for the Jeffersons. You really need help. And just because the theme song don't make it not true. And if that makes you laugh, I think you're going to get what you want out of this uneven but sometimes very funny picture. And you've certainly never seen Tom Cruise like you see him here in a trash mouth cameo as the meanest SOB producer in Hollywood. So I say problems, but see it. I say see it as well. Uh, Matthew McConaughey, also very good in a supporting role as an agent. And Steve Coogan, very funny as the director. Nick Nolte is in this Nick movie. Nolte, it's a big you know, Ben Stiller's yeah. throwing a lot of stuff at the screen, Michael. And I would agree with you. Some of it is very funny. Some of it is too broad. I mean, he's yeah. stretching the conceit of these guys not knowing they're not making a movie anymore to the point where even in a comedy like this, it's absolutely ludicrous. Which I guess but, you would agree, you would buy yeah. it if the if the budget were smaller. Yeah, but, I think I think the, uh, it's trying to look like Platoon times. Yeah, seven, he's sort know. of like having his dynamite and, and exploding it too. Yes, but yeah. Ben Stiller's a very smart guy. He obviously you know somebody who grew up in show business. He really gets it. Uh, he's also I think very generous in spreading the laughs around. I think Jack Black is the guy that gets kind of the the short end of the stick yeah. there because he's just playing the, the broadest the, the, bunch, the porky yeah. guy who gets you know his his well, certain things happen to him physically. Let's just say you know yes. Robert Downey Jr. I think you have to have an actor that talented to pull off a role Very that dicey could have then become, here. you know, the <laughs> yeah. equivalent of C. Thomas Howell and Soul Man. Soul Man, and it, yeah. It, and oh, it I is. Love Soul Man. It's just very funny and very annoying. And one of the great laughs, too, I don't want to give it away, but there's there's fake movie trailers at the beginning yeah. of it, and one of them, the one with uh, Downey yeah, Jr. Yeah. and Tobey Maguire is, 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 in a way, <laughs> the sad thing is the movie peaks at minute three with that, but, you know, there's enough other things, I think, yeah. to mitigate that. I would agree with you. Next up is Fly Me to the Moon. I saw it in 3D, and I say you can skip it in all three dimensions. <laughs> Now, rule number one of animated films, it's possible to turn a universally reviled creature into a lovable hero, 
For example, Ratatouille. Rule number two of animated films, rule number one does not extend to maggots. Now, to be fair, the main characters here, they're not maggots, they're just flies, and they're not completely repulsive, I suppose. Where Kelly Ripa voices a mommy fly who worries when her crazy kids hitch a ride on Apollo 11. They took a rocket to the moon, Mommy. What did you say, sweetheart? He said rocket. He clearly said rocket. I heard moon. Oh, my lord of the flies. They are going to the moon. It's the late 1960s, and humans are about to journey to the moon. Did anybody see that? See what, sir? A fly. Three, to be exact. Woo All right. The filmmakers try to ratchet up the cute factor with those aforementioned maggots to say it doesn't work is an understatement. The actors do their best with the mediocre material here, but a story about American flies and Russian flies battling to become the first flies in space, it ain't exactly Wally. -E. It's not even space chimps. The animation is okay, the 3D effects are underwhelming, the jokes are corny, and did I mention I'm not really enamored with the flies and the maggots? Skip it. This thing is, <laughs> it's one of the worst films of the year in any genre. To have this come out with Clone Wars in the same summer is just cruelty to children everywhere. And I, I tell you, you got this layout where, okay, it's, it's shot for 3D, great. You know, I like that form. But you have scenes that go on for minutes where they're just flying around and sort of in a yeah. very, uh, in, a, in a way that just uh, is designed to show off the format. And man, really oh man, doesn't. it is like checking. And, it. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a story that unfortunately, or I guess uh, unfortunately for us, probably Probably should have died in the in the planning stages where they just didn't have an effective, uh, likable series of Nothing. circumstances going here. And you're so right. Between this one and, and the in the Clone Wars, it <laughs> proves that in animation there's just as much of a range of good to great to horrible as right. there is in live action. Right. Also, and this whole jingoistic thing about the Americans versus the Russians. The Russians have really taken it in the shorts all year. I mean, Indy Four. I mean, it is it has been <laughs> rough on these Russians. And I want to stand up for the Russians right now. Well, so. why don't you go ahead and stand up for the Russians? Okay. Coming up next, Kevin Spacey stops. Stars in what I think is one of the best movies of the year so far. That's in our video segment. I feel like I'm stuck in the night of the living bubbies. This week's video segment is brought to you by Raisinets. Make a deliciously smart choice with Raisinets. We're the police. We can do whatever the hell we want. Looking at movies new on DVD, a couple of lousy flicks, Street Kings and Deal, stay away from them. But we have Recount, which premiered on HBO, one of the best movies of the year. Of course, this is the retelling of all the madness that went down in Florida for the presidential election in the year 2000. Great work from Kevin Spacey. I can't do it like this. We may well have won this election, Chris, and we owe it to this country to find out the truth. Guys, my video pick is Miss Pettigrew Lives for a Day. It's one of those comedies where everybody's lives get rearranged for the better in the space of 24 hours. Set in London just before World War II, the film stars Oscar winner Frances McDormand as the wily social secretary to a gold-digging American showgirl played by Amy Adams. Ice pick. It's in the drawer somewhere. Ice in the fridge, dear. I want the pick for murder, not ice. See? He's such a hothead. He takes love so seriously. Is that a problem? Of course, it's a problem. I like this film. Starts out pretty shrill, but it finds its footing, and by the end, it's poignant as well as funny. All right, so both Miss Pettigrew Lives for a Day and Recount will be in stores on Tuesday, and we'll be back with my picks for three to see, the best three movies in theaters, right after this. Okay, recapping the movies on this week's show. We both say see it for The Rocker. It opens next week. We split on Henry Poole is here. I say skip it. Richard says see it. We both say you can jolly well skip Star Wars The Clone Wars, uh -huh. and we both say see it for Tropic Thunder, and we both say skip it for Fly Me to the Moon. All right, now it's time for three to see. My picks for three of the best films in theaters right now. At number three, the loud and obnoxious but sometimes brilliant comedy Tropic Thunder. At number two, great work from Ben Kingsley and Penelope Cruz in Elegy. And at number one, Woody Allen's latest Euro comedy of sex and manners. It's Vicky Cristina, Barcelona. And to me, that was the surprise. The Woody Allen picture is probably his best, you know, at least since Match Point, and maybe one of the best of the last 20 years from him. Strong work from Woody. That's it for this week. Until next week, the balcony is closed. America pancakes at IHOP. Hurry in for Washington Apple Crisp, Oregon Mixed Berry, and Louisiana Bananas Foster. IHOP. Table for one? Come hungry, leave happy. We know your dirty little secret. Your mop.
Get to know the cleaner way to clean with the Lipman Wonder Mop. The mop head is machine washable, only from Lipman. She's smart. He's smarter. She's the smartest. But him? Make a left. Not so much. Smart people. Own it on DVD and Blu-ray High Def today. Hi, welcome to Progressive.com. Come on in and I'll give you a free quote. Quote and compare in about eight minutes. Now that's Progressive. Call or click today. It might seem strange, but your antenna TV could become just a box if you don't get this box. In February 2009, some TVs will stop working unless they're upgraded to digital television with this DTV converter box. Without this upgrade, your antenna TV will not work. Make sure your TV is DTV. Call 888-DTV-2009 or visit DTVAnswers.com. Don't let your TV become just a box. Richard, I just want to say it's been an honor sitting in this chair, and you have made it easy and fun to talk about the thing I love the most, the movies. Thank you for that. I appreciate oh, thank it. Thank you, Michael. I appreciate that. This marks my last show. Eight years ago, Disney and America's most beloved and respected film critic, Roger Ebert, gave me the opportunity to take the seat in the balcony once occupied by the great Gene Siskel. My gratitude will never cease. I poured my heart and soul into this show, and you know what? It's been a blast. Whether I was hearing from an Oscar winner telling me he watches the show every week or a kid in Nebraska telling me I was all wet on The Lord of the Rings, I want to thank everyone who tuned in and shared their passion for movies. It's been my privilege.